Shabbat Shalom. From a little story titled, among other things, Hooray! I started to study Chumash. This is translated from the Yiddish. Shabbat afternoon, all the students of Shlomo Hasover's Cheder, little Hebrew school, gathered in his home, wearing festive clothes. The Belfer, the Cheder assistant, dressed me, the honoree of the party, in my father's gold chain and pocket watch. We walked in pairs through the marketplace to my parents' home. The house was filled with relatives, neighbors and friends who had come to hear my sermon for the first chapter of Leviticus. They stood me on a high chair and opposite me was the inquirer. Come to me, O oh young child. I am not a young child. I am already a fine youth. If you are a fine youth, said the teacher, what have you started to learn? Chumash. What does Chumash mean? Five. What? Five bagels for a greitzer? It's a type of coin. No, five holy books of our holy Torah. And what are the books called? Breshit, Shemot, Vayikra, Bamidbar, Devarim. And which are you learning? I beg your forgiveness. This is how the story is written. The little boy says, this one. And the teacher says, what? You're learning about your middle finger? He says, no. I'm learning the third holy book of our holy Torah. And what is it called? Vayikra. What is the meaning of Vayikra? And he called. Who called? Who called? Did mother call father? Perhaps the beetle of the community called everyone to come to the synagogue? Who called? Vayikra, he called. Adonai, God. El, to Moses, someone whose name was Moses, lay more to say as follows. Daber, tell, El, to, B'nai, the children of Yisrael, the Jews. And thus did I continue as the people around melted with contentment. After my sermon, the Belfer and a family member stood at the door and every child received a bag of cake, nuts, and candies. Then the gathered guests sat down at the table with the Rebbe at the head to enjoy a royal feast in honor of me, four-year-old Isser, who successfully started to study the Torah at a propitious time. This adorable story, even with all of its funny little unintendedness, is a reminder that in the shtetls and all the way really up until the 20th century and still in some places around the Jewish world, children as in almost at three, I started Hebrew school. They learned their letters, and then they started with this book. Not with In the Beginning, not with Baby Moses, but with the sacrifices in the temple of old. Why to begin in the middle of the Torah? And why especially when there is so much skin crawly stuff in Vayikra, so much adult material, so much about sin and dismemberment of animals and blood sacrifices. What a strange place to start for children. And yet it happened all the time in traditional circles. There are a lot of possible reasons why children would have been given this story, these stories with which to begin. There's a sense of smallness at the beginning of Vayikra, 
The first word has a small olive. That's the way it's calligraphed, a tiny little olive. We're not a thousand percent sure why that's the case, but there's something that's small and humble about that little olive at the end of the word vayikra. It's manageable, it's compelling, and it's a wonderful place to ask children, why do you think this is? They have all kinds of answers for it, and we can add our own. But Aleph is a silent letter. It's all potential. And so in a way, that little Aleph on the page at the beginning of Vayikra, the way it is scribed, suggests infinite potential. A moment of silence and stillness before whatever it is going to happen, whatever begins. There is so much about these stories, however, in Vayikra, that our modern sensibilities would say are not appropriate for children. In fact, they might even be considered scary stories. Why do we read scary stories to children? I have to admit that the same question occurs to me every year on Purim. Why would children start with the scary stuff, all the stuff that can go wrong? There's a lot about sin and atonement and bad behavior. That's probably to be honest, the number one reason they give. Um, well, the best reason that's given for why children begin with Vayikra in places is that the children are holy and so they should come to study the holiness codes. I like that better than uh, an alternative reading which says that children at a very young age need to be a little bit scared into doing the right thing. So they should stay very far from sin. So basically a disciplinary work. Okay, probably both work, to be honest. But there's a lot in Leviticus that's actually downright frightening. And yet kids read it, and they study it with their Rebbe, or their Belfer, or their Melamed, their teacher in the Hebrew school. So what's so good about scary stories? You can all name ones, or many, that you were probably told as children. Some of the Grimm's fairy tales are aptly named. They really are kind of grim. And yet we all grew up with them. We were raised on villains and heroes and dark shadowy presences and wolves at the door. And Purim is certainly an experience of that. Every year I wrestle with whether or not children should even be included in the Purim festivities. And of course they should be. But I think about it every year because the Megillah is such an adult story. There are almost no children mentioned in it at all except for things that aren't so terrific. This is a story about grown-ups and the goings on between very adult people, and most of it, a lot of it, is downright frightening. So I asked Kevin Scott, author of the Warhammer Adventures, why he writes such scary stories. And he answers, first of all, scary stories are kind of fun. A scary story is the literary version of a roller coaster. You strap yourself in and are sent on a thrilling ride that quickens your pulse. Your stomach lurches and your fingers tingle. Then when it's over, nine times out of 10, you laugh or you throw up. <laughs> but you've just pushed yourself to the edge of your comfort zone, all without being in actual danger. The same goes, he says, for scary books. We live in a scary world, especially for kids. There's so much that they don't understand, full of emotions that confound most adults. Children experience fear and anger. They can be frustrated, nervous, jealous. They are let down and have to cope with rejection and disappointment. It could be said for all of us. But Mr. Scott says, I would like to think that kids reading scary stories, especially the ones that he writes, will understand a little bit more about the importance of working together to find solutions for seemingly insurmountable problems or how to dig deep within themselves to find the courage to get through something that usually makes their palms go clammy. Scary books give us a chance to examine what we're afraid of, 
to talk about it and shine lights on negative emotions rather than just bury them deep inside. It's a survey of more than a thousand British parents that said that 33% would prefer to steer clear of books for their children that contain any frightening characters. They were asked what fictional creations they found scariest as children. Among the ones that were cited were The Wicked Witch of the West, in The Wizard of Oz, The Child Catcher, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, The Grand High Witch and Roald Dahl's The Witches, Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians, and often topping the list, the big bad wolf, with his grandmother swallowing Little Red Riding Hood incarnation. But fear is a natural response, says psychologist Emma Kenny. And when you're reading a scary story to a child or they're reading it to themselves, the child has a level of control. They can put it down or ask you to stop. And the story can raise a discussion where they can explore and explain the way they feel about a situation. Being frightened, whether it's by some of the situations in Leviticus or in the Purim story that we'll read tonight, being frightened by those stories can help make us more resilient. She agrees with Kevin Scott, as do we all. The world is a scary place, but knowing how to confront fear is a good thing. The survey of the British parents also found that while a third of parents avoided books with any scary characters at all, 78% admitted that baddies helped children differentiate between good and evil, 53% said they helped children learn to cope with difficult situations, and 40% admitted that those stories helped even the parents conquer their fears. Their fears. How can we feel safe and secure until we know what it's like to be afraid? Anything that gives us a wide range of emotions in a safe and controlled environment can be very beneficial. Not everyone loves scary stories, and as adults, we can choose to look away. But I think the fact that Purim in the end, and Vayikra also, is available to all of us for all ages should be a reminder that Children are probably more mature and more capable than we think, and adults are probably more like children than we want to admit. When we read these scary stories today, tonight, and in the future, let's take those good lessons. Remind us that we can be resilient, work together, and face whatever comes, hopefully with a good story to lead us forward. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Porim Sameach tonight. <laughs>